Inside our workspace, you can see we have a ball hanging in midair and it is anchored. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna remove the anchor. So it's no longer anchored. So what's gonna happen is when we play test, it's gonna drop to the base plate and the ball has a touch event inside the ball. So it's gonna record the touches of the base plate. Let's take a look. You can see I have not touched the ball yet, but it recorded touches from the base plate. So what we wanna do is we want to make a change so that the ball only record touches from the player and not from anything else to check to see if the part that is touching our red ball is a part of the player. What we're going to do is we're going to insert an if statement here. So we're going to say if other part dot parent. Say if my hand is touching the red ball, we're going to go to the parent of my hand, which means other part dot parent. It's going to give you the character inside the game that is touching that part. And we want to check to see if this character has a child named humanoid. So we're going to do colon, find first child, humanoid. So if the parent of the part that is touching the ball has a child named humanoid, then it is a player that is touching this part. Let me add an N over here. And we're just going to go up here and reformat our document. So basically, now we're only going to record the touches from the players. So if the base plate is touching our ball, we don't care about it. We're just going to skip this, this whole thing. Only when the player is touching the part, we're going to record that touch. Let's play test now and take a look. You can see before it recorded a bunch of touches from the base plate. It shouldn't do that anymore. Let's take a look. You see, no touches from the base plate until I go and touch the ball. And that's when it recorded the touch of my right hand to the ball. That is how you check to see when a player is touching a part. And once you find out it's a player that is touching a part, you can do whatever you want in your game, such as giving the player points or taking away the player's health or anything you like your game to do when a player touches a part. Now, in case you're wondering why we're looking for a child named Humanoid, when we want to determine if it is a player that touches the part, let me play test now and I'm gonna show you why. So now I'm inside the game. Let's now go to the workspace, expand the workspace. You should see your character inside the workspace. Now expand your character you're going to see that there is an object named humanoid inside your character. And that is the reason why we're looking for a, an object named humanoid inside the character. So this is the character. We're looking for a humanoid object inside the character. We're looking for this humanoid object to determine if it is a player that is touching the part. If you look in the properties window, you can see that this object named humanoid is also of humanoid type. So we could have done it this way as well. Back to the script. So instead of looking for an object named humanoid, we could have looked for an object type, an object of type humanoid. So we do, we could have done find first child, which is a and the type of object we're looking for is a humanoid object. Then, doing it this way should work as well. So you have two different ways to determine when a player touches a part. You can find an object inside the character, which is of type humanoid, or you can find an object named humanoid inside the character to determine if it is a player that touches a part.